everyone. My name is Libby Gleason, and I am the chair of Westwards. Westwards is a literature-based organization in Western Sydney, serving children and young people and emerging writers of any age. Literature, the writing and the reading of it, stimulates and allows the individual to grow. We seek to develop writers from the diverse communities that make up Western Sydney. And we want the voices and the stories of these people to be written, to be published, and to be widely distributed. In 2004, I was a literary resident at the Children's Literature Centre in Fremantle in Western Australia. It offered all kinds of opportunities for young people to meet writers and illustrators, to create their own stories, to publish them and to share them with other students throughout the Western region. And nothing like this existed in New South Wales. Over 10% of the population of Australia lives in Greater Western Sydney. 49% of the population is under the age of 15 and residents represent over 170 countries. A hundred languages are spoken and many of those who live in this region grow up in a family where English is not the first language. The region is the third largest economy in Australia behind the CBDs of Sydney and of Melbourne. There are high levels of unemployment and of all kinds of stress and as well, one fifth of the, op of the population of Aboriginal Australia is in Western Sydney, with over 60% under the age of 24. As a writer for young people, I knew the creators of children's literature almost never came to the region. Stories were not written about them, and there were almost no opportunities for young people in the West to write creatively. So we began intense lobbying of politicians, that is state politicians and bureaucrats. In 2007, as chair of the Literature and History Committee of the Department of the Arts in New South Wales, I managed to uh, negotiate a, a small amount of money from the Minister for Education, Carmel Tebbett, and the Minister for the Arts, Bob Debus. Blacktown City Council agreed to support the Western Sydney Children's and Youth Literature Development Project. And the council would offer us an office and they would pay the on costs for a project officer. And Judith Ridge was appointed in that role at the end of 2007. I chaired an advisory committee and for seven years, the project conducted activities, including school residencies for writers and illustrators, family events alongside the Blacktown, Culture, um, Blacktown Arts Centre exhibitions, poetry slam, storytelling for the very young, and professional development for writers, for librarians, and for some teachers. We also did zine workshops for young people. We were significantly supported financially by the then Premier of New South Wales, Nathan Rees. In 2014, it was felt that the organisation should grow and become an independent corporation. This would give us a more assured presence and allow us to expand both our projects and our reach. And in 2015, Michael Campbell was appointed as the executive director. In February 2016, Westwards brought together literature organisations working in or into Western Sydney. It was entitled Writing the West, Future Directions for Western Sydney Literary Culture. Now the outcome of that conference, that seminar, was a call, a call for greater connectivity in the sector and for a Western Sydney Centre for Writing. The centre would be specific to the diverse culture and the languages of the region. 
Well, Westwards has now grown into a major institution. Our school program has developed and grown significantly, and we enjoy a formal relationship with the libraries, libraries across Western Sydney. We also have writing centres in Wedderburn, which is a part of Campbelltown, Parramatta and Blacktown. We showcases, showcase writers reading their work on our YouTube channel. We run poetry readings and there are different writing groups that have been set up in Western Sydney. These include an African Australian writing group as well as an LGBTQIA group as well. We support prizes such as the Blake Poetry Prize, the Fisher's Ghost Poetry Prize, and the Blacktown Mayoral Writing Prize. Westwards has won the Excellence in Arts and Culture in the Western Sydney Business Awards for Excellence for the past two years, clearly showing that we are recognised as the premier literary organisation in the region. I am proud of the way the organisation continues true to its guiding principles. Access, diversity, inclusion, excellence, innovation and integrity. I am especially proud of the bespoke programs that we continue to offer to the children and young people and the outcome of these projects is often published work, work that values the experience and the creative expression of these young writers. Okay, now I'm going to hand you over to our Executive Director, Michael Campbell, who has a background including performance and writing for performance and memoir. He's as well a judge of various writing prizes. Okay, Michael. It has been over seven years since we incorporated and over that time we have grown and developed. Integral to that it was the forum that Libby referred to where we did a very large consultation process about what we should be as a, a new company. That has formed the core of how we operate, our mission, our artistic program and we have grown from just being children and young people to being a organisation that is creates and shares the stories of Western Sydney. We haven't lost that core of children and young people in fact that's our strategic goal because if you start early then you will change people, you will change a culture. So we run an extensive program into schools, we do after school classes, we run holiday programs, we run uh, a digital engagement through the Clubhouse website which is a dedicated site for ages 9 to 12, we do mini master classes for children and young people, we do readings online and through our YouTube channel, uh, Westwards Official. It's a comprehensive program that takes uh, writers from children and young people through to emerging writers through programs of called the Academy which is uh, training young artists to be an independent artist everything beyond the writing but we also provide workshops mentorships fellowships residencies all the way through to their very first uh, publication in the trade and then beyond because we think it's important to provide that career solidity because we always employ professional writers back to facilitate all our programs we run that, the model of what we do and the rationale for what we do is that we're needs based. And that came from that consultation all those years ago, where first of all we work out what's needed. We imagine the potential and then we put it through the prism of the real world, through who we partner with, how we partner with it, resources, people, financial. And then we work out the program that best meets the needs, hopefully realises the potential through the prism of the real world and then we find the profile of the right person to deliver those programs and in doing so just last year we did 244 activities we worked with uh, 150 professional writers and editors and illustrators to create a 
program that reached just shy of 21,000 people, despite all the difficulties with COVID and lockdowns. And what we did was that we pivoted from being in person to online. We engaged around 16,000 people online uh, through our Westwoods official YouTube channel, through our podcasts, but that we also um, worked with people in person, um, which last year was extraordinary. Um, that it felt like a novelty last year. But what that does, it provide, has provided us a springboard into this year. And in particular, a springboard into our schools program, which, which is what we're going to talk about today. So just to give you a, a, an idea of just what we're doing right now, we are working with 18 schools currently, and that is 10 writer in residences with six workshop programs, eight author visits, and one writing club that is uh, spanning terms. We're, that is going to result in at least nine publications. At the beginning of last year, we thought it was very important that um, we bring uh, to our schools program, because it's such an important part of what we do, a dedicated schools program manager. And we're very, we asked and we're very lucky that um, Cheryl Coots accepted. Cheryl has been working in schools uh, in the public education system in Western Sydney and Blue Mountains for about 35 years. She's been recognised uh, by a Minister's Award for her teaching uh, and the dedication she brings to it and the quality and excellence she brings to a teaching practice. She's been a classroom uh, teacher, she's been an assistant principal, she's been a relieving uh, principal. She is uh, the pr uh, president of the Blue Mountain sub-branch of the S Children's Book Council of Australia. And she's a current judge for the e Eve Palmer Award uh, as part of the Children's Book Council of, uh, Book of the Year Awards. She is highly experienced. We're very much li uh, ha lucky and happy to have her. Cheryl, how do we actually do it to develop those programs? Okay, as Michael mentioned, I taught for around 35 years in schools in the Blue Mountains and Western Sydney, so I'm very familiar with the needs and the requirements of the syllabus and also the demands on teachers' time today, which since COVID is quite profound. We work in partnership with schools to meet the needs of staff and students to develop a range of programs. We don't impose programs, we work in collaboration. So things like writers in residence, writing workshops, author visits, but we structure our programs to meet schools' needs. So they're integrated, not imposed. We also, bearing in mind the demands on teachers' time, we do all the organisation and administrative work for programs to ensure there's minimum impact on teacher time. We employ a range of writers and illustrators to ensure that the experiences are authentic and we match the presenters we pick to what the schools are looking for. So for example, at the moment, I have a school, a high school who requested a focus on, on crime and the author who's going in there has that specialty. We also actively seek to involve teachers in the programs. So apart from the fact they have to be there for duty of care, we like the fact that teachers take on board the skills and the tips the authors are conveying to students because then it becomes like an incidental professional learning and you have much better traction for ongoing benefit. So they can learn from the tips of authors, they can then share what they're learning from there with uh, their colleagues. So why is it important, do you think, to bring professional authors and illustrators in as opposed to uh, other people who, you know, um, have got the skills but aren't professionals? Well we all know literacy skills are fundamental to children reaching their potential and achievement. The modelling by people who've been successful in writing is quite profound in its impact. So they, apart from that, they, kids are incredibly excited by meeting their favourite authors and learning from them the tips for improving their writing have that authenticity that they don't always, I'll be realistic here, don't always see in their classroom teachers. They are often more receptive to ideas from a real author 
And the teachers then also pick up tips. We have a school that has rewritten its whole creative writing program based on having an author do a residency at the school last year, just from learning what inspires the author to be creative and, and to write. So it has a profound impact. And I remember from that school um, that when that particular teacher, that classroom teacher, said to their students that you know that they had this particular author come in, she reported back to us that some of the uh, kids were in tears. And that's exactly right. And it was evident. And this is, these are high school kids. Yeah. Um, the whole, the five sessions, and I actually sat in on all five of those sessions, and the impact on the students and their receptiveness to the ideas and the creative, creative ideas for inspiring writing, they just absorbed. And the finished product, which we'll refer to later, is quite amazing. Yeah, so when I kind of re refer to this, because part of my job is to get the financial resources, you know, get the money in order to support these sorts of programs because all our programs into schools are to a greater or lesser extent subsidised, um, is we could bring into a school, um, you know, it, let's, let's talk sport. We could bring in school, into a school a coach from the local Little, little Athletics Cup and the kids would have a great time and they would learn stuff but that's not what we do. We go and we get Kathy Freeman. And we bring Kathy Freeman into a school who not only is the best of the best, but understands that the foundational techniques are critical to the ongoing development of those people, uh, those students as people and as potential writers. Plus also a role model. And can you imagine if we were bringing Kathy Freeman into a school which had high uh, Indigenous population, just what that would do for those students because they could see it's possible for them to. That's what we do with the award-winning writers and the professionals that we bring in. So, Michael, what do you want to expand on what some of the typical programs uh, that have been used by Westwards for years? I mean, we've built on them. And these are typical, not necessarily the only things we do, because we said we work closely with schools to tailor programs to meet their needs. But what are some of the typical programs, and the, you know, what is the evidence we have that has proven the success of these programs? So, um, so for example, um, quite often the programs kind of fall into various models, theme and variations, if you like. So sometimes it's the, the peak experience, the author visit. This is the sort of the, generally speaking, a large audience and it is an author talking about their work. And that generally is an inspiring um, situation for the students, which then the teachers and teacher librarians can kind of carry on with. Sometimes it's sort of workshops, one-off or one-off masterclasses or a series of small workshops on a particular kind of uh, theme or genre. So for example, when we move into say, uh, genre in year 10 or 11 of crime, of speculative fiction. Uh, we bring in crime writers, spec fiction writers, in order to talk about the sort of the particular kind of uh, approach and working within the confines of uh, a, high, a highly defined genre, how to create that, what are the sort of the, the particular needs for you know creating of tension of character development of plot development and structuring those kinds of things um, we also have done uh, workshop uh, sort of long-term programs which are writers in residency but it's they generally fall into five weeks uh, with editing into a publication quite often um, because the publications become a symbol of value for those uh, for those students and for their extended families quite often. But one uh, program that we have run uh, a number of times is, is pairing up different schools. So if, uh, we've run a, a program called, we called Landscape Place and Me which paired up uh, schools within Western Sydney and schools in Lightning Ridge in Dubbo 
and that was for term one, working with the students in the classroom, with the teachers. Um, we then were, uh, brought a writer in residence in term two into the classroom, uh, ostensibly the same series of exercises, at the end of which they created a piece of work. We took them through the editing process, working with the teachers about how to edit. And then um, we uh, introduced the, the two cohorts of students through their work. We then um, uh, went and worked with the teachers about how to critique the work, how to give constructive feedback to their previous cohort. The, um, and then with the knowledge that we would bring those two groups of students together on neutral territory in regional New South Wales on a week-long riding camp. They were both out of their comfort zones. They were both experiencing new and wonderful, amazing experiences in regional New South Wales, but a totally different perspective on what it's like to be a teenager from the different cohort of students. Out of that, another piece of work was developed which became a publication, which was then launched uh, jointly launched through uh, Zoom so that we, they could both meet each other. What happened out of that program, and I quote, um, West Words changed my life. That's kind of what the impact of what it does. Um, the, uh, what it does to uh, kids' confidence, what it gives, gives to strengthening the voice, is not only writerly techniques, but it's tools for life. Yeah, and there's, there's support on that impact from UK studies oh, on yes. just the impact of bringing an author into a school where the difference between schools who hadn't had author visits and those who had, the ones who had had marked increase in reading enjoyment, reading achievement, and the same for writing, and the amount of time the students engage with reading and writing each day was it showed marked improvement. You know, we have comments from parents where we've had author visits who said this has been the highlight of their child's school career so far. So it might be a one-off, even a one-off author visit can have a profound impact. Because also what that does is, and this is a really an important part of the kind of the whole structuring of what we do in the program, is that it does a looping back in and a reinforcement back into the importance of reading. That it begins and ends with reading. And it begins and ends with that idea of that you're absorbing uh, something that gets worked in and you are testing out how to communicate what's inside you back so you can read it back to yourself but also you, other people can read it. And that kind of that, that looping backwards and forwards is like an upward spiral as they go through their educational process and their development as people. So. Cheryl, um, last year you worked extensively with students and staff at Bennett Road Public School to develop and imp implement the programs there to meet their needs. Can you tell me a little bit about that specific um, example with Bennett Road? Yes, yeah, certainly. So Bennett Road Public School is a school in Western Sydney, the outer areas of Sydney. It is, has, uh, the families have uh, a lower socioeconomic educational background to the average. It has a significant indigenous population, around 14%, and the, the biggest uh, population, cultural population, is Pacifica, so there's about 38% of students have a language other than English background. It also has a significant number of inexperienced teachers. Like a lot of Western Sydney schools, there are, there's a high proportion than in other areas of students, uh, new teachers, and teachers have only been teaching for a few years. So we had extensive consultation with the executive and the teachers at Bennett Road and developed a range of programs that had a little bit of a delay for part of it due to COVID lockdowns. But essentially we did run a writer in residence program. We had author visits, some of which extended into this year and professional learning which involved working in the classroom in partnership with the teacher doing demonstration lessons and then collaborating on uh, programming and that has continued all of those things are continuing into 2022 so we used jody mcleod did author visits we had three authors in one day go to the school where the whole school was engaged in author visits for a day 
and as I said, the uh, professional learning is ongoing this year. So how was that teacher professional learning implemented to achieve that maximum benefit? I worked with a stage one teacher, stage one assistant principal and classroom teacher. Hi, my name is Stephanie Timms and I'm an assistant principal at Bennett Road Public School. Um, we have the, had the privileged opportunity to have the West Words program come to Bennett Road and implement a few lessons for us here to support us with our English syllabus delivery. Um, at Bennett Road, we had an overall strong foundation in how to explicitly teach those English concepts. However, we found that we needed to re-inspire a love for reading and writing. So we were very happy to have Cheryl come in and co-plan a unit with us using quality literature to inform um, quality lessons within our classroom. Cheryl then was able to demonstrate some of these lessons and for those teachers who are observing, she beautifully explained the purpose for each strategy that she was implementing and provided beautiful scaffolded lessons for our students where they felt that they could be successful within every lesson. And from that, we found that because they were able to achieve success, they were more engaged and more excited to keep reading and writing within the classroom. Um, from these lessons, we were then able to have our teachers develop their confidence in programming together in a collaborative fashion utilising quality literature to inform the steps within our lessons. And overall, we've just seen a huge improvement in student learning and love of reading and writing across stage one. And we're very, very grateful for the program that we've had. She lacked confidence, I, I think, to teach, use literature to teach explicit English outcomes. And whether we like it or not, we're bound by the syllabus. We used the text Wilfred Gordon MacDonald Partridge, which linked to their uh, HSIE unit at the time, but took that text in the context of that to specifically teach reading, comprehension, writing, grammar, uh, visual literacy over a number of lessons. The lessons were differentiated and scaffolded to enable engagement and achievement by all students. And there was marked improvement in student engagement, confidence, and achievement, and it was then we worked with teachers to expand what I did with one teacher. And we had a number of teachers sitting on those lessons and they were filmed so they could be taken to staff meetings and discussed what strategies I was using in the classroom. From there, we developed a whole teaching program, which was a new approach to what they'd been doing. And it then had a profound effect, which we're building on with other classes this year. So you also worked with, um a specific class and teacher to utilise the, sk the skills of Jodie to run the writer in residence program. How did you manage that while students were learning at home for part oh, of that time? Oh, and that was a challenge. Oh. We had planned to do it in, in term three, but of course we're in lockdown then. Um, it was a three, four enrichment class who had actually been with their teacher for two years. It was the second year they'd had that teacher. So we had fairly capable students. We actually kicked it off again early term four when students were still learning from home the first few weeks before they came back to the classroom. This was a class where every student was engaged online with their teacher every day for the whole period of lockdown. So when we looked at whether we could possibly, you know, online is not ideal for something like this because that personal engagement is much more, has much more impact. But they were looking for something different. They'd been at home for a term, they were engaging with their teacher every day, they were very keen and the teacher was totally committed. So we started with uh, the first two sessions, it was a five week program, the first two sessions happened while the students were still at home and our author zoomed in and started the program there. The next two sessions were in the classroom because the students were back in the classroom but we were still not allowed in the school. And the final session, restrictions eased, and we were there in person. Now the excitement in the students when we walked into the classroom, you couldn't measure it really. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty exciting. So it was successful because we had a committed teacher and we just had the structure. Not, it wouldn't have worked in other settings under lockdown because at that time you couldn't um, have students mixing across groups, etc. but they're in one class. My name is Miss Liao and I teach one of the enrichment classes at Bennett Road Public School, a class where we have grouped like-minded students to extend them in their learning. My class, 34L, had the opportunity to participate in the Writer in Residence program in 2021, which was led by Jodie McLeod, author of picture books Leonard the Liarbird and Liva the Liarbird. 
This was an incredible experience for my class and allowing for them to work with a real published author made it all the more exciting and the students were definitely engaged in all the lessons. Through this program, the students were able to further develop their writing skills as Jodi taught them insightful tips to help them create stories that really engage their readers. Some insightful tips were show don't tell, beginning with a bang, descriptive language, just to name a few. This really helped my students to strengthen their creative writing as Jodi provided them examples and gave them opportunities to experiment with creating beautiful descriptions and sentences of their own. And providing the students with these examples from her very own book really aided them to understand these language features better and to dwell deeper into their imaginative minds. This in turn increased re engagement in reading as students seem to better grasp the language techniques that we have been learning in the classroom. They also learn to understand the importance of reading to increase the creativity in their writing. Thanks to Jody and the Writer in Residence program, the students were all thoroughly engaged. As they progressed with the lessons and were provided with inspiring examples, my students were all eager to participate and create sentences of their own when prompted. I witnessed a boost in confidence with my students in their own writing ability and all were determined to create their own stories using Jodi's tips and tricks. At the end of the program, all students were given a published book with a collection of all their stories and it was really great to see the excitement in their faces, their smiles, and it was um, great to see how incredibly proud they were of themselves. I definitely felt that my students found participating in this program an amazing experience and it really assisted them to become more confident writers as well. We actually kicked it off again early term four when students were still learning from home the first few weeks before they came back to the classroom. This was a class where every student was engaged online with their teacher every day for the whole period of lockdown. So when we looked at whether we could possibly, you know, online's not ideal for something like this because that personal engagement is much more, has much more impact. But they were looking for something different. They'd been at home for a term. They were engaging with their teacher every day. They were very keen and the teacher was totally committed. So we started with uh, the first two sessions. It was a five week program. The first two sessions happened while the students were still at home and our author zoomed in and started the program there. The next two sessions were in the classroom because the students were back in the classroom but we were still not allowed in the school. And the final session, restrictions eased and we were there in person. Now the excitement in the students when we walked into the classroom, you couldn't measure it really. Uh, so that was pretty, pretty exciting. So it was successful because we had a committed teacher and we just had the structure. Not, it wouldn't have worked in other settings under lockdown because at that time you couldn't um, have students mixing across groups, etc. but they were in one class. So as a result of that, we did a publication, and uh, which is here. This is the publication from Bennett Road. And each student contributed at least one piece of writing to that. So 28 students, so we ended up with quite a comprehensive publication at the end of it, which is exciting. So obviously five weeks is, in the scheme of things, not a long time. What is the evidence of the ongoing impact of those five weeks? Well, part of that, students are published authors, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, and we do celebrate that success with, with a, a book launch and where possible, have parents in last year, that was not possible, but we did Zoom parents into to book launches. The improvement in reading and writing goes way beyond the five weeks of program. So the programs we've run so far, that is reported consistently that they're seeing ongoing effect, but really the best evidence for that we have is from the voices of the students themselves. Did confidence in your writing ability change? I think that Confidence in my writing ability did change from the experience with Jodie because she explained a lot of things in a way from an author's point of view, writing books herself, and it really helped me to understand like the books and the different techniques that you can use in writing, and it helped me to further understand things 
along with Miss Liao's help. And I, again, still now think that my confidence, it was like boosted and changed because now I feel like I'm a, I'm a lot more of a confident rider and I feel safe to like write a lot more like different things and try things out and use all different techniques. What were the main tips for writing did you pick up from working with Jody? Are you still using these now? Yes, I am still using basically nearly all of the tips that I got from Jody because they were very helpful. Like things like how to start a how to start a story with a bang and how to write like really good show not tell sentences. And I had already Miss Lia had already explained this to me and we were working on it in class, but Jody with her lessons, she really went in depth with them. And even over the Zooms, she made beautiful PowerPoints all the time that had different things in it that really helped me to understand all of the different techniques that she taught us. Have your reading habits changed after working with the author? Yes, I used to read a lot of books before meeting the author. But after each individual individual lesson and all the lessons in general, I have been reading more in-depth topics such as Water Balloon, Grim Tales and more. What were some of the changes you noticed in your attitude to writing? I have been writing more descriptive sentences not only from my teacher but also from the author herself and I am not writing as much dialogue as I have before the lessons. I have been more excited about writing and more literacy, such as reading as well, because of the lesson she has provided for our class, which made me a better writer. Because of that, uh, it benefited me and not only me, it also benefited learning skills, reading skills, writing skills and more. What was your lasting memory from your ses sessions with Jodie? My lasting memory from the writing sessions with Jodie was when in a Zoom session, Jodie showed my class an example of when a phrase or a sentence was too flowery. She told us that this meant that the sentence felt overdone when we read it out loud and had too many adjectives. Jodie then told us that if a sentence felt flowery, then it meant that maybe the sentence did not belong in its current spot. I think this was my lasting memory as I had done many flowery sentences before and I could relate and fully understand what Jodie was explaining. How was your writing changed as a result of the program? I think my writing has changed and definitely improved after the program as I began to use more of a variety of sentences in my narratives consisting of complex compound and simple sentences blended together. Before the program, my sentences would be bound together in large groups, such as complex, complex, compound, complex, simple. So they didn't flow very well. Explain your different reactions to the Zoom sessions and the in-person sessions. First of all, I loved how, despite it having to be, some of the lessons having to be on Zoom, I loved how Jody continued to teach her lessons to her full potential and it was as if she didn't even realise it was on Zoom and just ignored it. However, one of the hard things I found about doing it on Zoom was I felt like you weren't really able to know what she was explaining as well or you weren't really able to explain what your comments were as well. And that's when the in-person sessions were a little bit more beneficial, I found, because if you wanted to say something, you could just get up and say it. What is your favourite thing about the Writers in Residence program? My favourite thing about the Writers in Residence program was probably how pretty much every time Jodie explained something new to us, to our class and I, she always referred it back to her book, her two wonderful books, Lila the Liebird and Leonard the Liebird. I felt like ex showing us these beautiful and thorough examples in her books made it a whole lot easier 
and simpler to understand. What is the best thing about working with an author? My experience with children not only made my writing better, but the best thing was when I got to write my story. It's also inspiring to make my own children's book when I grow up like Jody did too. When it was published and I got to see my own story, that was probably the best school day ever. How did your attitude towards writing change? It has changed a lot because it's my writing before. It definitely had a lot of mistakes. But as Jody went through the steps to make my writing start with the band, have more descriptive words and much more, it really it really helped them in writing samples, which is very important to stay in the enrichment class. Therefore, I wouldn't be here without Jody. But those are only some of the reasons why I love the Writer in Residence program. What is your favorite thing about the Writer in Residence program? Throughout the lessons with Jody, she told us many great tips and how to write excellent stories. Everything she told us was enjoyable and educational. It's really hard to choose my favorite thing, but I would say the best thing about the program is probably that we got to work with not just an author, an amazing kind writer, Jody. Working with an author is an amazing experience, but working with Jody made it even funner. She, she told us how to start off with a bang, use exquisite words in our writing, and, and many more outstanding tips to, to make our writing way better. We, were, we learned so many things and I'm glad we got to do it. Explain your different reactions to the Zoom sessions and the in-person sessions. During the Writers in Residence program, we had many Zoom sessions because of COVID, but jo Jody still tried her best to see us. The Zoom sessions and the face-to-face -face sessions were very different, as in the Zoom sessions, we had some technical issues with the sound, and um, it was very hard to see her. However, when we did the face-to-face -face session, it was, a, it was a finer experience. We got... We got to see her and she could give feedback on feedback on our work and we got and we could hear her better. Either way we still had so much fun and learned so many things. Free for L had a great time and we would like to give a big thanks to Jody and the Writers and Residents program. Did your understanding of the writing process improve? From where I first started, I strongly believe that my understanding of the writing process has improved. As soon as we had our first Writer-in-Residence writer program, Zoom, my limited understanding changed. Jodie's experience and tips allowed me to try and try. After several Zoom sessions, my understanding grew as well as my knowledge. From then on, I was able to make a basic boring sentence more descriptive and sophisticated. What is your lasting memory from the writing sessions? Even though I loved every second being with Jodie, the lasting memory I will, I will always adore is when we had our last writing session. Our last writing session was a blast. It was astonishing. We received our own published book and we celebrated. I was proud. Because of Jodie's inspirations and help, I was, I was very joyful to say that my story was published in a book. Although having a mini party with my friends was awesome, seeing a real author was even better. I will never forget that day. It will always be stored in my heart. Did confidence in your writing ability change? Explain. Yes, all the tips that Jodie had taught us 100% built confidence in my writing ability. Tips such as beginning with a bang and using themes in my story made mine and lots of other students' ability to write change. Jodie would always know that before we even start writing our story, we should think of inspiration and themes that we could use to make our story outstanding. And then from all the tips and information that Jodie had taught us, I believe I became a, became a better writer. What is the best thing about working with an author? The best thing about working with an author is that they already have so much knowledge about writing a book and they can share that knowledge to children who, who would want to be a known author in the, in the future. They tell you how it is being an author and the steps you have to do to create a book. And how you have to plan the concepts of, of the story you're about to write. Jodie taught us how the steps of creating a book and why she mainly created the book. I remember she, I remember she made Leonard the Liarbird and Lila the Liarbird for her two daughters. But we were lucky enough to experience it as well. At the end of this experience, we, we ended up getting a book with all our published stories. 
and I know everyone and I know that everyone really enjoyed that. And that told me some of the things I really enjoyed about the Writers in Residence program. So at Bennett Road, and it varies from school to school when we do the publications, at Bennett Road they had an Aboriginal education officer who happened to be an artist. Now she had already presented a, an amazing uh, piece of artwork to the school. And what we did was in, we incorporated that into the publication, both on the cover and throughout. And then the designer uh, incorporated photos relevant to each piece of writing. That can vary from school to school. In some schools, we will include school, uh, students' uh, illustrations to highlight their artwork. In others, it may be all photographic evidence of the school. So it's very much personalised to what the school would like. It's not us again imposing what we think the pub publication should be. And all publications are quite individual. Every student at the book launch receives a copy of their book. The teachers get a copy, it goes into the library. One of the most exciting moments was at one school, not, not Bennett Road, another school, although they were pretty excited too, was seeing students running around getting each other to sign and autograph their books and the, the author and their teacher to autograph them as well. They were very excited. You don't often see that much excitement in Year 9 students, but they, it was quite powerful. But Michael, can you talk about some other examples of publications that uh, we have produced over the years in primary and secondary schools because there's a number of them now. There are. We do between seven and nine publications per year uh, out of our schools program. And so what we do is that, uh, like Cheryl said, it's quite often incorporate some of the um, students' illustrations themselves. Like the work that we were doing in Blackstone High School where Kathy Jinks worked with the students to create a world that was the Marin Depths. And so our designers took some of the uh, children's work but then incorporated uh, a thematic design with it. We also have at other times commissioned illustrators to create works. For example like in Parramatta North Public School which we did uh, back in around 2017 I believe where we had one artist, Sadami Conchi, a Parramatta-based artist, who wanted to do a original work for each and every one of the students. We employed Leanne Mulgo-Watson, who's an award-winning book illustrator, to illustrate, do two artworks that were incorporated into their publication, and it's a school with a fairly significant Indigenous population, so we're trying to match the artwork to the school and the the fabric of the school, I guess. One of the biggest problems that we hear so often working into Western Sydney is that with the diversity of Western Sydney populations is, is that the kids will not be able to see themselves in the books that they reach for in the libraries. With our publications, that is not the case. They see themselves, they see previous students from the school, they see the illustrative work, they hear the stories, they read the stories. These are really important works for the school the community, for the students themselves and the broader communities where they take uh, those publications home to. We're really proud of the work that we do in schools. We believe it's got an immense impact and we believe that because people tell us. Um, it is, uh, but we don't just, as I said right at the very beginning, our children's and young people's program isn't just confined to the work that we do in schools. We have after school classes. And we have an immense resource in the, the Clubhouse website, which is, provides a place which kind of brings together various resources from our YouTube channel our mini masterclasses that are directed just for young children and young people. We have a monthly author there with a blog, so kids can actually engage directly with, it, with authors. These are fantastic resources for kids, but they're also fantastic resources for the teachers and carers who want to provide the best for their young people.